So we're in The Hague, Netherlands at the SDN World Congress. I'm here with Preys and Pate from ADVA. So Preys and good to see you again. You too, Ray. Um, so uh, as we've discovered over the past two years and, and again in 2016, NFE is actually really difficult to implement and commercialize. Uh, but now ADVA has a proposition called NFE Simplified. That's right. So that sounds like it should be quite enticing for the market. So well, what does it actually mean? What is NFE Simplified? Well, that's a great question. And what we're seeing is that the operators are recognizing this is, this is, this is difficult to do. But at ADVA, we have the ability to help operators because we have been at this longer than just about anybody else. Right. We have the fortune to have worked with innovative operators in deploying NFE in real services generating new revenue. Okay. So that's the first piece is the experience. The second is a very important thing that we've heard about in this show, and that's openness. Operators want solutions that are not single vendor. Yep. And with our ensemble architecture, we've created a, a solution that is truly open and embraces the ideals of openness, including things like APIs and components and interoperability. So while we have a complete solution, operators can pick and choose the parts that work for them. Okay. And, and the final piece is an ecosystem. With our Harmony ecosystem, we have onboarded a uh, broader catalog of VNFs than just about anybody else in the industry. And that means that operators can deploy a truly multi-vendor solution that, that meets their needs. Okay. So with the real world experience, with the openness and the ecosystem of, of partners, we're able to bring together a solution that meets their requirements. Okay, so in terms of the experience you've gained, what would you say is the, the, the key or maybe the top two lessons that you've learned that you've been able to take back to your customers? from your, your experience over the last few years? Well, the first thing is that the standards are not complete, so that means that there's going to be issues. And what you have to have is the operator working closely with the suppliers with an eye to making things work. And that's different than the old way of working where operators wanted to find a way to throw you out. <laughs> now they have to bring everybody together and say, okay, we're going to sit in this room until we make all of this work. Right. And the second thing is that the commercial models require flexibility. Yeah. Operators want a success-based system where you succeed when they succeed. And so whether that's revenue sharing or pay-as-you-go licensing or other innovative models, everybody has to have some flexibility to make the commercials work. Okay. And then in terms of the openness, I mean, open is now a word that's used you know, quite brazenly you know, across the industry, but do you get a sense that the operators are starting to figure out themselves what open means for them? Yes, they, well, they, they've decided a couple of things. First, they like the idea of open source when they can get it, but they're starting to recognize that there's complexities. You just saw AT&T release their e-comp and say, yep. well, we're going to get a third party Amdocs to, to take over and, and run. So they're, they're starting to see some complexity there. But other parts of it, like Linux, KVM, OpenStack, Open Daylight, are now receiving a lot of industry support, both from the suppliers and the operators, and are becoming truly workable solutions. Okay, so that's helping the, the whole ecosystem. You mentioned the number of VNFs, and I'm sure that, that's growing all the time, the number of VNFs that are available in the market. Um, are the operators really kind of, you know, uh, taking uh, opportunity of the fact that there are now multiple VNFs maybe with the same functionalities, and they're able to choose and almost match one's a against the other? Absolutely, and in fact, you're seeing them start to take advantage of that to create service differentiation. So right, for example, right. maybe they have a very full-featured firewall that includes unified threat management that's great for their top-end customers, but which has significant licensing fees. They may bring on an open source firewall that's much simpler, but has lower cost or no cost other than perhaps maintenance for their lower-end customers, so they can have some difference in the service level difference in the cost and difference in the pricing and offer different levels of service but also protect their their uh, premium product okay but and but all of that they're able to do that without actually changing anything that's running underneath absolutely and that's the beauty of moving to open hardware open systems they can upgrade services upgrade what they're delivering without changing the physical network okay excellent well that all sounds like it it might be tough but the, the, it's, it's becoming reality in the market, and I'm, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about that here at this event and in the months to come. Preston, thanks very much. Great talking to you, Ray. Thank you.